Okay, Florida van man, what you got for us today? I'm gonna talk about a few code readers. Just brief mention, the Autel AP200 is a really nice unit. That's about our favorite right now. The iCarsoft MB2 has uh, been a long time favorite of many people on the forums and the groups. iCarsoft, I'm sorry, the original Carsoft, not iCarsoft, but take away the I, just Carsoft has a nice little handheld unit that's not too bad. This computer used to be the original CarSoft 8.0. Uh, well, original to me. It was the original one that worked with the T1N Sprinter. Uh, cost a few thousand dollars back in 2007. Came with all this hinky stuff to hook it up. More recently, we bought a DAS, which is this hinky stuff to hook it all up, and a hard drive to put in our computer. And that is the go-to as far as uh, deep tests, compression tests, smooth running tests, things that we used to rely on the original CarSoft. Somewhere along the line, we picked up a, a copy of software for the DAD or the Dr. A's Diagnostic. Yeah. Dr. A's Auto Diagnostic software, uh, which is essentially the old car soft that was uh, whittled down to be specific for FedEx. Let's look at how some of them work. Being in quarantine, we didn't start the vans for several days, so we've got several uh, engine lights on for nothing more than a low battery start. Let's hook up and clear some codes. Color-coded keychains. I think there's a little pin in here somewhere. Yep, there it is. I don't use this one much anymore. Ooh. Yeah. I still use this one on occasion. It loads pretty quick, so it's good for just clear clearing things real quick. Read trouble code. It is a Benz. Going to read the currents. Crankshaft position sensor. That's unexpected. That might have just been from when it was so low. Instrument cluster control, crankshaft position sensor. Interesting. Now, I don't think we're going to clear them right now. We're just going to leave those codes there and hook up a different meter and test them. One thing I like about the car soft meter is it tells you right away what the code is about. That'll make sense in a minute when we hook up the iCar soft. Current powertrain diagnostics. Current powertrain diagnostics. And what would we want to go to there? Got all kinds of live data to, to look at. Probably help to have the engine running when we look at them though. Agree. Look at engine coolant and temperature. Should be. I think you can tap multiple to monitor. Right. That's correctly. right. Yep, let's go back. Current powertrain. Let's look at load value, of course, going to be zero. Manifold pressure. RPMs, we're at idle. Vehicle speed sensors, we're not going anywhere, we're on quarantine. Mass is always math. Mass airflow sensors, interesting because we've been having trouble with that. Got another page here. fuel rail pressure. We'll go with those. Oh yeah, look at all they that. are. Good stuff. If I weren't holding it against the steering wheel, it wouldn't jiggle so much. Right. Updates pretty quick. Yep, as you can see it updates really quick there. We'll let it settle down. And I'll say when I'm pressing the pedal this time. Ready? Three, two, one. So, yeah, you hear it, see it, it's pretty live. Pretty live. Pretty much real time. So we'll turn that off and let's pick another meter. So next we're gonna look at the iCarSoft MB2. iCarSoft MB2, go to diagnose. Not Oops. a touch screen this Not a time. touch screen, I forgot. Gonna go over down to Mercedes Sprinter and press okay. It's a Sprinter, top version, latest version. 
It's a Sprinter. It's a 901. 904, well, it's a top line. It's a diesel engine. We don't want automatic. We want to go to manual select so it doesn't run through all the tests. And help to have the key on. There's a lot of different categories you can test on this one. Yep. Now we know the engine light is going to be the CDI, the top lines. So we're going to press OK there. Read fault memory. Ooh, there's five of them this time. This looks more like a low battery start. 2076, 2068, and see that the fault code is not found in the database. That's always the case. So we'll have to go in and look these up on a computer now. These are genuine Sprinter fault codes. They're specific Sprinter fault codes, I should say. Sprinter specific fault codes. Because this is showing a lot more codes than the CarSoft did. Okay, so we'll escape out of that. We'll go down to actual values, similar to what we did on the other one. Start the truck again. Save positioner overview. You see down here, there's six items to look at. We're seeing five of them, so we can page over and look at the next one. Charge pressure. And this too, it updates really fast. Live data. Escape out of that. Maybe the exhaust gas is where your issue's at. It's everything related to EGR. From experience, we know the on off ratio of exhaust gas recirculation gets stuck at 6% when the intake adaptive is too far off. Found that to be a problem on my daily driver van and didn't have any codes relating to it. Eventually found replacing the MAF made a huge difference in the drivability, uh, but the EGR was still stuck at 6%. Reset the intake adaptive. It had an even bigger change in drivability. The van drives, well, I'm not gonna say like new. It's still 15 years old with 500,000 miles on it but it made a giggleable difference. That was a good day. That was a good drive. Giggleable. Is that a word? It is now. It is now. It's got truthiness. Yes, it does. This is a little more specifics regarding to fuel injection. Actuation period of main injection, zero. Interesting. I believe there's pre-injection and post-injection on the next page. I thought main injection is the one that... Oh, well, there it is, post-injection. That's curious. Yeah, I thought we main to... injection was important. We ought to compare that to another van. Oh, the difference of an air-conditioned van with a, with a windshield guard. <laughs> and a complete shaded cover. No main injection here either, huh? Looks same. Okay. Fun, fun. On to the next one. We put a chain on that so we don't forget it. Yeah. Too many times we have left this in a car and drove away or even just closed the car up for the night. Woke up in the morning to find a dead battery, so we put this uh, leash on it so that it's very visible and not forgotten. Now with that plugged in, we'll turn the key on, and it's already been it's already been synced to my phone. I'm gonna turn my Bluetooth on. It's the AP number here. I'll tell something or other. Not sure quite what it means. Hit allow on that. Uh... Okay. All right, so I logged into my free account and now the Ben Sprinter is showing again like it usually does. Click on that. Again, we want the manual selection. It's a Sprinter. Uh, we're gonna go with the 906. Nope, we're not. We're gonna go with the YD, WD, because this van is a WD. So we're going with the WD. We're in the USA. And we want to control, go to the control units, not auto scan them all. Engine control module. All right, so we'll go to read codes. 
key on engine off. Oof. Signal from component B, mass airflow sensor. Mass airflow sensor, crankshaft sensor. Hmm. Engine off time, specified time not observed. Hmm. Don't know what that's, that means. That's weird. 2822, please refer to, refer to vehicle service manual, <laughs> exclamation. Wow. Smokes, man. What'd wow. you do? I don't know. This one is indicated M mill on. That means that's the one that's lighting the check engine light. Yep. And if they have snowflakes next to them, that means they have freeze frame data, but I haven't exactly figured out how to decipher the freeze frame data. Oh, engine speed zero. So to, the engine was off when that code was tripped. And then it saves some other parameters too down here with it. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like all dead battery stuff to me. Oh, well, the engine speed was there. Hmm. Well, more than zero at least. But Bat yeah, battery, battery voltage, voltage 10. 10. Yeah. Let's go back and look yeah. at these others. Yeah, only one has it. Okay. I think we can erase those codes without much worry. So, how about the live data? Okay. Control unit, yeah. engine control module. I assume it's the Bluetooth that makes it so slow. It might be. But it also might be slow because it's trying a lot of different things and... Live data. Live data. Got a few different categories here. Quite a few different categories. Well, we know on the other meter we looked at sensors and EGR, so let's look at the similar sensor overview. Scroll down to see a couple more. A little bit slower to update. That might be because of Bluetooth. Or because it's reading so many variables at once. That too. Each one eating up some refresh rate. I believe in this one you can turn things on and off too, and you can also set some of them to show as graphs. So you can graph a variable if you'd like. Yeah, display mode here, this is how you can change it to a graph if you want, and you can change the unit too. Yeah, we'll have to dive into that deeper for a, uh, a video on just this meter. This one gives you definitions of the codes, so that's pretty nice. Yeah, it takes a long time to relate there. The yes and the no, if I step on the pedal now, now it says it's stepped on. Let off the pedal. All right, so let's look at uh, EGR values just for fun. Air mass is always red on all of our vans, don't know why. Charge pressure, fuel injection, cruise control values, which this van doesn't have cruise control. Oops. So what else can we show you here? No engine light, we turn that off. Okay, so we talked about a few different meters. Which one would you recommend to somebody who just bought a Sprinter and needs to diagnose it? Without a doubt, the Autel AP200. It's my go-to. It's easier than the other ones. Uh, it tells you right away what the problem with the code is. You don't have to go in, research what the codes mean like you do with the uh, iCarSoft. It's a whole lot less expensive than either one of those two. I believe $70 will have this delivered to you next day from Amazon. Um, connecting it to one vehicle with an app on your phone or your, or your, uh, your tablet is, is free or included. If you want to use it for several vehicles, you can do that. It costs a little bit extra. Second to this one would be the iCarSoft because it's affordable. I think it's $250, $300 for the MB2. From what I've seen, this does everything that does and more. In some other videos, we'll talk about the bigger computers, the DAD and the DAS. Uh, but for now, for your everyday Sprinter driver, this is all you need.